Hey guys, uh, we're doing something a little different. We decided um, with the bad weather that we've been having lately that we would do a walkthrough review um, of our new 2023 Tracker Targa V18. Um, it's about just over two months old. Um, we didn't want to do a review probably until you know we had it maybe six months to a year, but we've had a lot of issues um, that we're going to go through things that um, we didn't think that we would run into um, but yeah so we decided we're going to do this now and then we'll probably do one again maybe mid-summer end of next summer um, after you know a full season of of being able to use the boat so we previously had a 2019 tracker Pro Team 175 um, TXW that I bought for myself and um, bass fished out of for about two years. And then Carter, at six years old, decided an interest in you know going fishing with me. And one thing that I didn't want to do is I didn't want to take him out bass fishing standing on a deck or standing on the floor casting 50 60 times and not catching a fish because you know we all know it's just going to get bored and then you know lose interest in it so we have a fishery out here that has a good population of blue catfish um, along with channel catfish and you know flatheads to a degree um, so we decided that we would set our boat up for catfishing so we if you've seen some of our other videos um we started doing this YouTube channel for him. Um, never did any videos before that. And if you if you see videos of my older boat, you'll see that we put a rod bar across the back. And it worked. It, it worked for a while, but it wasn't it wasn't safe for him. Um, you know, the gunnels are, you know, about that high off the back deck. Um, and then the floor is 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 real you know, isn't real high as far as his waist level. And, you know, every time we'd get a fish on and he'd be up there, and I'm sure you can actually see in some of the videos, you know, I'd grab his life jacket, you know, and kind of pull him to the side and pull him down. And uh, so we decided last year that we would shop for something bigger. Loved the, the, the 175 I had. Never had an issue with it uh, from the day I got it to the day we traded in. Never had an issue with it. Um, so this is going to kind of go through, um, you know, why we bought this, what we paid for this, um, some of the options that you can pay for through tracker. And then also, like I mentioned earlier, we'll, we'll go through, um, some of the issues that we've had. Um, we, we, we bought this particular boat because of um, the growing interest with, with him fishing um, and also a growing interest in wanting to go into maybe larger water, you know, bigger water, and also have the ability to pull a tube or go swimming. Uh, so that's why we kind of upgraded to this boat here. We ordered this boat on um, April 23rd, 2022. And we took delivery on August 5th. So it took about nine weeks to from the time I ordered it till we took delivery. So we ended up trading in our 175. So from June, about June until August, we didn't have a boat. So that's why we haven't put any videos out. Um, you know, or we would have been fishing all summer. So we were really excited, you know, to get this boat. Um, you know, I'll put a picture up of and show you how excited I was, you know, when I, when I first went and picked it up. First thing we'll do is, is we'll take you on a 360 walk around the outside of the boat that I actually did um, before the rain. So that was outside. As you can see, we're in the garage. You can't really get to the side of the boat where I have it. So I did that outside. So we'll do that first.
Okay, so first we'll go over uh, the pricing for the 2023 uh, model. Again, this is a V18WT. Uh, tracker has it broken down. Basically, you start out with your motors, right? So the base price for this model with the 150 horsepower XL four stroke is 40,995. Uh, tracker claims 46 to 47 miles an hour. With that base price, um, you get the 150, you get the um, power drive trolling motor that comes standard with it. Um, and then there's some other features I'll, I'll go through. From then you pick, you can pick an upgraded motor. So you can pick this, that same configuration with the 200 XL Pro XS four stroke, and that starts at 45,700. There's a freight charge of 1325 and a prep fee of 375. I'm not sure if those freight and prep charges are for everywhere in the country or if that's for my area, depending on how far you go, I'm not sure. Uh, so the available options through Tracker, okay? So you got your base model and the available options first is they have a combo package. The combo package adds two um, rear flip up jump seats in the back, okay? When they're, when they're flipped down, it makes the back deck uh, the fishable area in the back deck where you walk around much larger, right? And then you can flip them up and then you have two seats back there. Um, also comes with uh, removable bow seat cushions for up front. When we do the walkthrough, I'll show you where those are. We don't have them. And then also includes a ski pylon. And so that combo package is $1,500. Then they have um, the option for a 9.9 .9 horsepower kicker motor. That is $3,370. Also an option of um, a remote shifter for the kicker motor for $1,000. Uh, then they have an option for all vinyl floors and decks. Okay, ours has a vinyl floor, carpeted decks. That is a $500 upgrade for all vinyl floors and decks. There are two cover options that you can get when you order the boat. One is they list it as a ratchet cover. That is $1,150. Then they also have an option for a premium rope ratchet cover for $1,450. We didn't get a cover. We keep it in the garage. If I, if I could do it again, I, because of what we've been through and what we're going to go through with this boat, I probably would have gotten a cover, but we'll explain that later. Um, also, you can get a Bimini top. comes with the VersaTrack hardware, okay? The VersaTrack that runs all the way along um, up front and here. It's, it's a great feature. Uh, so they have a Bimini top with the VersaTrack hardware for $1,225. With that, you can also buy the front curtain set, okay? That set will go from the your windshield up to the Bimini. Adds like buttons on your windshield and it's a it's a curtain that comes up here. I think it also it also may include a cover for this opening here, but I'm I'm not sure about that. I'm not exactly certain what that front curtain set says set. Um, includes, but it might include that. Then there is um, also a full enclosure, which adds the side side and rear curtains um, for eleven hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, so those are the options that you can get through Tracker for the for the V eighteen. That's it. That's those are the options. Okay. So our price for what the configuration we have, which is the 200 XL Pro SS 
and upgraded trolling motor. Okay, so we upgraded our trolling motor to a Tarova. Um, tw still 24 volt, but 80 pound. Um, it's got MDI, spot lock, GPS. Our price was 49300 which includes freight and prep charges. So that was my out the door cost before taxes, right? 49,300. Um, some of the features and specs that come standard on the V18, I didn't go, I didn't list them all here. Um, I did the kind of the ones that I thought were interesting or what would interest me. Um, so the, the, the trackers um, in, as far as the aluminum boat industry, are made from an eighth inch thick marine grade aluminum with a deep V hull. Okay, that's the, the V18, V19, v, right? So they're all welded construction. There's no rivets. So if you go, if you look down the side of the boat, right, straight down the side of the boat, you'll see little spots you can see where it's welded, right? I mean, not on the outside, but you can see like where the, um, the beams or the frame is welded to the side. You can see that little imperfection. So it's not perfectly straight like a glass boat, which most people understand. Um, the, it, this is a diamond coat that, that's Tracker's trademark for a powder coat and clear coat. It's a very nice finish. Um, we have black. He won it blue. Uh, 2023 added blue in. Um, I think they took the charcoal out it's like a charcoal gray, so you can get black, red, or blue. And we, we did the black. This, it's, the boat is rated for up to six people. Um, so the boat itself is 18 feet, two inches long, just the boat. It's 19 feet, one inch, with the swim platform included in the back. So there's two different measurements. So the actual boat is 18 feet two. Add in the swim platform, it's 19 feet one inch. The width of the boat is eight feet six inches. It's, it's a, I mean, the width is, is great in these. The sides of these gunnels right here, you can stand on these when you're out on the water. And I mean, the, the boat's very stable going from side to side. I love the stability of the boat in the water. Um, one thing that tracker lists is the towing length. So the towing length, including the boat motor trailer, is 25 feet, 4 inches. So I would guess that that's with um, your, what do, you, what do you call it, your transom saver, right? That's, that's with that out, with the motor up. I would say this thing is 25 feet, 4 inches. So the storage length. This is something for me that was, you know, an interest to me because I stored in my garage. I wanted to know what the length was. This is the storage length with the breakaway tongue folded in, so broken in, and the motor trimmed down. It's 22 feet 3 inches. That's tracker's numbers. I don't know if that, I don't know if that is the way, so this motor here, if you have one, you know this, but especially with my 200, I know, you cannot trim this motor all the way down or it will hit. The ground okay so the motor is still up a little bit so i don't know if this are trackers numbers somehow with that motor trimmed all the way in but you can't trim this all the way in it, it, the the skaggle hit hit the ground so mine sits maybe you know maybe that kind of angle right there so i'm not sure if that's in that 22 feet three inches the boat in the water drafts 18 and three quarters inches the dry weight of this boat is 2,205 pounds. The package weight is 3,845 pounds. One of the things also that interests me was storage height, okay? This is to the top of the windshield, okay, because I measured. The motor is very close to that height, but the windshield is actually the highest point. Tracker's got it listed at 7 feet. Okay, I measured it, put a level across it, and took a tape measure down, and I measured it at six feet, 10 inches from the floor to the top of the windshield. 
But they're, you know, so if you have a seven foot garage door and it actually opens to seven feet, this boat will fit in your garage. Um, all these numbers that I was telling you with storage length, with weights, with, um, uh, you know, the, the, um, as far as the, the overall length, ever, I don't know if, if all these are with the 150 motor, right? I would think they probably are because that's the base motor. So I'm not sure if the 200 changes that storage length. It, it might. I didn't measure it, so it might. I think these are numbers are probably with the 150. It comes with a 40-gallon fuel tank, and it comes with an 800-gallon per hour bilge pump that we got used to using already on the water. It comes with one cranking and two trolling motor batteries, and it comes with a three bank charger. Okay, there is a charging port just on the side over here that um, was shown in, I think I actually zoomed up on it in the walk around video. Um, I can get to mine, you know, I'm probably, you know, a foot and a half away from the wall, so mine's plugged in over here but I know my 175 was in the back, so that might interest somebody. Um, some of the other options, like uh, with, the, with the trailer, right? So the trailer, I did it as a walk around. I'm not gonna do specific features on the trailer. Uh, when we do the walkthrough, you know, we'll start at the bow and go towards the back, but I'm not gonna, I'll tell you the features of the trailer. And then in the walk around, you can see all those features. Um, one of them, if you notice where the steps coming up, steps are really nice. I mean, he's comfortable. They got a nice, you know, uh, uh, bar that you can grab onto. I mean, it's safe for him to walk up. Um, you know, we use it all the time in the garage getting up and down. Um, it comes with a tandem axle trailer with hydraulic brakes on both axles. And then it comes with the swing away tongue. For storage i can fit mine in my garage without it swung away but we have a side door you can probably see in the back and i mean it's it's nice because broken away i mean i can still get to my side door but we have a pretty deep garage um, comes with all submersible led lights and then it has carpeted bunks and fender boards on the side guides if you want to call them that and then it comes with nylon straps on the back we put um bolt buckles on which is you know i mean that that's one of the great one of the greatest features you can you can put on i think um there are six flip up cleats that come it's pretty new um these are really nice they have one all the way in the back one right next to the console on both sides and then one up towards the front these are very nice. Uh, one thing I didn't have on my 175 was these, you know, the the um, the foldable the foldable ones, which are the flip up ones, which are really nice because um, now you know I can fish barefoot. I don't have to worry about kicking my feet on them. Um, and then also, I did want to list also too. I should have listed this earlier, but the distance from the floor that we're sitting in up to the top of the gunnel is about 28 inches, okay? If you have kids, that might be that might interest you because with him, it's above his waist, right? So it's a large floor area, that's why we didn't get the combo, and he can fish out of this area. And that was a big selling point to me with this boat is because he's not gonna fall out of the boat. He may or may not have fallen out of the other one, um, so that's basically the features uh, of the boat um, as far as, as feature specs. We will wrap this up and we're going to do a walkthrough next of the boat. Um, we'll go through all the compartments, show you everything. And then towards after that, what we're going to do is we are going to go, we're going to sit down again and we're going to go over all the issues that we had with a brand new boat from Tracker. So stay tuned for that. We wanted to mention one thing before we go up into the boat to do the walkthrough. Um, we did buy a new trailer jack. 
the reason we bought that is we'll explain um, when we do our sit down at the end with the issues we had with the boat. Um, one other thing that you saw in the walk around is the spare tire. The V18s do not come with a spare tire. Um, I bought that with my previous boat and kept it. So they sell them at Bass Pro Shop, um, but we did not get a spare tire with the boat. Okay, so we'll start in the bow of the boat. Um, up in the bow, they have uh, a live well up in the bow. This is a 19 gallon live well. We don't use it for a live well. Uh, we use it for a cooler because there's no designated cooler spot on this boat. Uh, they also have two padded doors um, that are magnetically closed. They have um, a band in here. I wouldn't store anything in here of value or that you would worry about losing on the water. These doors fly open when you hit waves and you're going through the water. I've never seen them open when we're driving, but they do fly open yeah. in the water. And then on this side, we have another compartment. This compartment here, uh, we store our anchor in it and extra life jackets. And then there's another padded cover here with the same type of um, same type of compartment. I've seen people store towels in there. That's all I would put in there. There are flip up cleats on both sides in the front along with cup holders on both sides. Okay, okay so we also have um, a cup compartment in the front of the boat. Some people store smaller tackle boxes in there. We just put the foot pedal in there. Um, there's also a light in the front, along with controls for your trim, a live well. along with the front live well, and then the trolling motor plug. And then there's also a 12 volt outlet. Yep. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is the VersaTrack you can see is also in the bow. And then um, also to show this is one of the upgrades we made is the trolling motor. Oh, and this. That's the nav light. Yep. And then as you can see, there's another cup holder. Yep. So that's basically the bow of the boat. Okay. So in the center, um, there's a rod locker in the center. Uh, it's rated for seven foot six inch rods it looks to me like you can you know maybe fit it's rated for maybe five six of them we tried putting four in there and it's very difficult the it says seven foot six our rods are seven foot and when they go in there they all want to go towards the center so we only put two in there and even with two of them they like to go towards the center um, but we use other rod lockers for the other rods um, there's also a compartment underneath the rods there. Um, right it's a small metal compartment. Um, we don't use it because you really can't access yeah. it if you have rods in there. Unless unless you take it out. Unless you take the rods out. Which we probably won't. Um, then you have a center section here. There's a removable tray. Then... Um, we keep a throwable and his life jacket in there, and then your two trolling motor batteries are stored here along with the, um, the uh, battery charger, the three bank charger is in there. This is my side. I keep all my snacks in here, plus a um, this is the, um, what is it called? Um, draft cover. Draft cover. I don't know why he keeps it in mine. Should be in here, but then I have my sunglasses just in case I forget them. I got sunscreen, which we forgot like 10 times. So... Then, this is not mine, this is his. The little trolling motor thing, I don't know what it's called. Remote. Remote. I don't know why he keeps them in here. You don't have that, that's for a transducer, leveling the transducer, don't worry about that. That's a level, for, we gotta do it why when do we go next time. Why do you keep this? Because that was fixed and we need to do that next time. So okay. I put it, all that in there. But that's, you don't have to go through all that, okay. it's all good. Um, also mention to them that all these are all these are lockable. Lockable. Right. 
You got a cup holder here. You, I don't. If if you look closely, you can find some one here. Cheese or something. Oh, my mind. Manuals. What? Just manuals. Manuals. Then he, they, you have a lockable little compartment. We don't really use it because we don't know what to put in it. Then here we got a speaker and a cup holder on each side. Then we got. What else is over there? Against the wall by the speaker. By the speaker. Oh, then we got a twelve volt outlet. Twelve volt outlet. I don't know why it was open. You gonna show them what your seat does? So then we got a movable seat, but I don't know why. But when you release it, it locks in here. Then if you, then when you do it, and then it goes here, not here, here. And here. I don't know why it doesn't go backwards. But that's all from my side. Okay, so we'll go over um, the instrument panel and basically the um, driver's area of the boat. We have a Bluetooth radio. That's uh, Bluetooth AM this is, FM. This is, this is one of my favorite parts. This is one of his favorite parts. Um, we have... The low rants, this is a hook reveal seven triple shot. So it has um, your 2D sonar, down scan, and then it also has side imaging. And, and, the, and the cover is on my side, which I showed you. Yep, the cover is over on his side. We took it off to show this. Um, this unit is, if this comes with the boat, uh, it's the only unit you can get with the boat. It's okay. That's all I can say about that. It's okay. Um, then you also have your gauges. You have you have your RPM and your trim gauge. You have your miles per hour, your fuel gauge. You have your voltage, and then you have your water pressure. Um, as far as switches, you have a master power switch. You have um, a switch for your bilge. These boats do not come with an automatic bilge pump. They're only switched. Um, you have your manual for your forward um aeration or an auto so that's for the for the front live well then you have your, your a manual or auto for your rear live well and then you have your um, front pump out and aft right your your rear one pump out you also have a switch for your nav and anchor lights and then you have a switch for your um live well lights um right next to here you also have a horn horn um, along with that on this side you have another 12 volt outlet on this side this ram mount i keep my phone in here very nice um, i've had it in here at 50 miles an hour uh, it doesn't even move um, and then there's a small compartment here there's a speaker and a cup holder down here um, that's for the um, hydraulic steering oh, okay. there so you have tilt and hydraulic steering um, very nice wrap steering wheel on here. Um, and then as far as the seat, so this seat on this side um, can go forward and back. Um, and then it can also swivel, okay? One thing about the swivel seat is I realized it can only go one way, okay? If you're as tall as me, I'm almost six foot, and you go to swivel it, um, you cannot get past your, your controls for your motor. So just remember that um, it has to spin this way, All right? So um, that's just something that I didn't realize the first time we went out and I kept trying to hit the, I kept hitting that. So um, that's basically the uh, instrument panel. And then um, we went over the- um, We didn't, did we go over the windshield? Uh, we can, okay. the, the windshield, um, it's called a WT. V18 WP walkthrough. It has this lockables because we always walk lock it when um if this is closed when mm -hmm. we drive because if we don't it's just gonna keep flying. Yep. 
And when we stop, it's probably going to like slam. Yeah. So. So and then we'll go over the rear of the boat. Here is the navigation and anchor lights. I have no idea what these. I think I think this is one of the lights. Yeah, the long one's the anchor light. Okay, anchor light and I guess navigation light. Up here is the another lot rod locker with it holds nine foot rods and random do we go to here sure okay. here is a never another live well so there's lights for the live well yep. um the boat lights. actually comes with the bait bucket it's a very deep live well yep um 30 gallons uh, we've never used it yeah Then if you come over here, I don't know if you can see, but here is where we keep the ropes, out, the plug, and I don't know what this is. That's a dock line also. Dock line. You take that compartment out. Then this is a removable compartment. Here is a metal compartment. Um, we store nothing in it. Because there's no purpose. Then here we have a light. We, this does not come with it. We built it. Bought it. Bought it. Well, well we bought parts. Yeah. Then we built it. We got a... There you go. Ow. It's new. <laughs> Flip up cleat. Flip up cleat. Then we got the motor, of course. Then if you come over here. All right. This is kind of complicated, so he's yeah. going to explain so it. So one thing I wanted to explain in here. So there is a master switch in here that you can throw. Um, I keep it. We use it pretty the boat pretty often, so I usually don't. I just leave it on. Um, but over the winter, I'll probably shut it off. Um, one thing I did want to mention is there is a circuit breaker in here. This circuit breaker here, uh, when we talk about some of the issues we had with the boat, this ended up being an issue. When I when we took delivery of this boat, this was not here. This circuit breaker was actually just laying between the battery and this back wall. Okay, and if you, we hit a wave, and as you can see, this was not this tight. But anyway, you can, this, this actually moved, and that circuit breaker hit the trip switch um, of that circuit breaker. So the dealer has since moved that. Um, but I wanted to explain that so you understand in the other video, or I mean in the rest of the video, what happened. So that's why, that's, um, it was compli complicated, so that's why... Um, he explained it. We got the same thing that was on the other side, as you saw. Multi bars. Multi bars. Then I don't know what this is. That's the anchor light. Anchor light with and then, don't pop worry, up Don't plate. worry about that. But the light there. Another yeah. deck light, light on this side. Light here. Then here, you can stack these in them. We don't have many, so we yeah. just don't yeah, we don't stack we them. don't we don't use many of them no. for catfishing. Um, so we don't really stack them, but I, we put this in here so you can show. I mean, you yeah. could stack, you know, if you're bass fishing or whatever, you can stack a lot of these in yeah. here. Like 10,000. Yeah. Probably less than that, but then if you come down here, cup holders on each side, compartment with we have planer boards in it, but you can you can have anything. Well, first not first anything. aid kit. First aid kit. It's just a small compartment. Yeah. Small compartment. We don't. It has a drain in it. Yeah. So. Then. I don't know what these are. Drains. These are pedestal. These are for seats. Um. Three seats here. And then. Okay. Here. We have a, another rod locker. We have two rods in it. 
How long? So, so it fits nine foot rods. So nine each rod rods. locker on the side fits three nine foot rods. Yeah. So you have the ability to have six nine mm -hmm. foot rods in the boat up to nine feet. Then if you come down here, we have, I don't know what this is. It's probably something. It's a, just a multi-tool. Multi-tool. I know what this is. This is a knife. Yeah. That's why we have a case. We have the grippers, which I, which, which, um, you might see a video with a special guest. We use this. She used it all the time. She was she didn't, like, how, um, slimy. I was like, you can just wash your hands on the water. So, she, she needed this. Then we got the way, which I have no idea how to turn on. He always have to, has to, do it for me. It's like he has mis mas magical powers, which when I hold down, it doesn't even turn on. But sometimes it just works. Then that's all of the rear. Rear. Yeah, one thing we wanted to mention, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, was the boat does come with four pedestal seats um, as a base model. It comes with yep. four pedestal seats. We don't have them in here because we use this deck for fishing, but it does come with two additional seats. Yep. And I guess that's pretty much the walkthrough. Uh, please stick around. Now we're going to actually go over some specs. the issues that we've had um, with this boat since we bought it. Okay, so we're back sitting in the boat. Uh, we went through, um, we did a walkthrough of the boat. Pretty much all of it. Pretty much all of it. Um, if you have any questions, Put in um, well, yeah, ask yeah. in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer anything I can. I'm sure we've missed things that somebody's interested yeah. in. One thing that I did have on a list to go over is the port for charging the trolling motor batteries is below the windshield, um, actually on the uh, starboard side of the boat. Um, that's where it plugs in. So, you know, I don't know if that matters to anybody at the location of it. Um, I know my 175 was all the way in the back, so it, it's up towards the windshield. You can actually see that in the video of the walk around um, of the boat. I actually zoomed in where that where that port is. Uh, so to go back a little bit, so everything you saw was basically the stock um, Targa V18, other than you know the the, the 200 horsepower motor um, is is of course an addition. Um, and then also, I think we showed the, the multi bars we added, the trolling motor, um, we added the, the, the one of the nice things I want to mention about the trolling motor is because it came with, because it came with a power drive, you can't, you can't tell a tracker, hey, I don't want the trolling motor. And it, do, it doesn't work that way. Um, you're getting that trolling motor. Now, what I did was I, you know, told my dealer, hey, I don't want that trolling motor. I need spot lock. I need GPS. Um, um, this one has the MDI, um, eventually, you know, adding a fish finder up front. Um, so what they did was they took the difference, um, how much the trolling motor is from tracker. They took that off of the Tarova. So it wasn't, you know, for a $3,000 trolling motor, you know, I paid 1900 basically to upgrade from what tracker had. So it wasn't a bad deal, but what we wanted to do is, this is kind of where we get into, uh, I guess, the issues that yeah. we've we've had. We had, um, we had like lots of issues. Lots of issues. Uh, you you wanna you wanna think that when you go and pick this boat up, you drive right to the water, right? Yeah. You drive right to the water, put it in the water, and nothing's, and go. And nothing's gonna happen. And nothing's gonna happen. I mean, you kind of you kind of feel that way. I mean, you know, a lot of people will say, "Well, tracker, you know, isn't you know top of the line. What well, does doesn't matter." You quality wise and you expect when you spend that money that literally the boat's going to power and float right and 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 dry you 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 think those things you know it will you have some screws missing you know will you have some yeah that's tracker that's just that's just the way it is i mean i my old boat i found i was taking a panel off and one of the screws wasn't there that that's just what you end up getting one of the things we had to decide upon and i will insert a picture here is my dealer actually called me when they took delivery of the boat and 
they said there was a scratch on your top of your gunnel from shipment. They didn't really say what it was from, but what it looks like to me is the strap maybe was either vibrating or they had the metal part of the strap on the gunnel. I could tell by even the picture they sent me that they tried to buff it out. They tried to do with it. It's, it's through the, it's through the powder coat. Um, and you, you know, you, there I am, you, you get an option. You got nine weeks. You waited for the boat. The dealer says, you know, Hey, either I can put it in the shop. My guy's a month, be, my month, my guy's a month out and you can leave it here. Don't have to take delivery. Don't have to pay for it. We'll get it fixed. You know, lot it out. Well, this is, you know, beginning of August. We're thinking we got two months, three, maybe months of fishing left. Let's just get the boat. And he says, I'll do an IOU and bring it back in the winter in the off season and we'll, we'll fix that. So that's what I did. Got a guarantee um, that it would be fixed. And we decided that we're, we're going to get the boat. And um, so we go and pick up the boat and I'll put a picture in here. Very excited. Um, love the boat. Love the size of it. Um, so glad I upgraded a 200 horsepower. I really am. Um, I actually ordered it with the 150 and called him a week later, hoping it wasn't too late to change it and change it to the 200. Um, I think it's worth the extra, you know, almost 5,000 um, for that motor. I just, I just think it is. I, I think if you, if you want to have it, it's there. If you don't, you know, you have the same motor everybody else has, you know, but if you need it, then you have that that bigger motor and this boat flies with that yeah, 200 horsepower does. motor um so after getting it home you know i hooked it up at the dealership so i didn't have to move it after i got it home i backed it in the garage and and you know folded down the trailer jack and i'm looking at the wheel of the trailer jack and i'll you know put a picture in here of that i explained that at the beginning um and the wheel was just all chewed up it almost looked to me like they left it down and drug it across the parking lot. You know, I don't know if it was from the dealer, from the, um, from manufacturer, you know, I'll, I'll never know. But the other thing was the actual shaft of it going down was all the, the powder coat or paint was just peeled off it. So that told me now that it's bent. It's actually bent. So when I'm winding it up, it's actually bent going up in there. It's just taking the, chewing the paint off. Now my dealer is an hour and a half away. So, you know, here, here's your choice. I got to be able to move it around my garage. Uh, one of the things is you saw in the video, I have, um, I have wheel dollies for the, um, for the trailer, you know, so I can get it in my garage, but I like to have it all the way to the side. So I got to be able to have that wheel, you know, and, and the first time we're moving it, you could just, it's going, doof, doof, you know, as, as it's going. And I'm like, well, that it's gotta be replaced, you know? And I'm like, tracker puts a cheap one on here. I'm just going to buy one. I want instead of waiting for a new one that's just cheap. So I ordered the new one that you see there, it made a world of difference. Anybody thinking that, you know, buying something like that, it, it makes a world of difference. Um, so what ended up happening is I did tell my dealer about it, showed them pictures and they have it right now. They are gonna get with Tracker and basically get me a new one or get me a, another credit for the dealership of that amount so I can spend it, which, which I'm good with. But either way, I was going to replace it with one I wanted, not what Tracker wanted me to have. So that's one thing. That's another issue that we had that we noticed the minute. I mean, this is just the day we're taking delivery. So far are these issues, the, the scratch and, and the trailer jack. Um, and then from there, so the first time I decided to take it out myself because I had to break it in. And it's really boring for him you know, to be, you know, varying RPMs to, you know, basically done it for a little bit. So we weren't doing any fishing. There was no, I wasn't going to take the time. I just wanted to get it broken in. So I actually, you know, planned to break it in on a Friday and we were going to go fishing the next day, which we did. We did. I don't want to say that, that I never got the fish out of it. Um, but one of the things that I noticed when I was breaking it in is that I'm sitting in these comfortable seats, which I really feel are pretty comfortable. A lot of people upgrade them, but I feel they're pretty comfortable. I got, you know, I got tilt steering, hydraulic steering. And the, the first thing, and I'm doing my break in, and I finally get to the point where I can, you know, I can give it, get up to 4,500 RPMs. And, you know, anybody that's had a bass boat, you know, you're, you're expecting your bow, you know, to raise and, you know, come down when it gets, gets on plane. 
And one thing I noticed with this boat is it just, it was like, I mean, it may have popped a little bit, but it was just, I mean, no, it would get up and go, but it really, I wasn't getting any rays out of the bow and it seemed kind of strange to me. And as I'm driving, I, I feel like, you know, if you kind of imagine it from the side, I feel like I'm almost facing into the water as I'm driving. It just didn't feel like I could get it, get it up. And of course I'm at the break-in, so it is, it is trimmed down completely. I mean, it's, it's not trimmed up, it's trimmed down completely. Um, I don't want to play with the trim until I get done with this, breaking it in. Um, so, you know, I'm trying everything I can and, and, and I'm kind of chalking it up to, you know what, hey, I'm used to a bass boat, you know, what I consider a bass boat. I know a lot of you don't consider the 175 a bass boat, but um, I'm used to that kind of light boat, that taking off, that that feeling. So, you know, I'm thinking that maybe, maybe that's just the way it's supposed to drive. And then it was about a one foot chop when I was breaking it in and I went to take off one time. Now it's trimmed all the way in, down, in, however you want to, trimmed all the way in. And I'm in about a one foot chop and I take off. And as soon as I start going, props blowing out. And I'm like, you know, RPMs are going up a little bit and it's just not, it's not grabbing the water. And I thought, that's, that's odd. I mean, I'm trimmed all, I mean, what else can I do? It's only a foot, one foot chop. We're buying a V18 thinking it's a deep V, this is for bigger water. I'm in a foot of waves. I, I and it's, it's not even grabbing the water. So what happened was after about an hour, I started getting a little bit more aggressive with it and starting to take turns to see what that prop would do. And I would, you know, take up, you know, not a sharp turn, but about 20, 25 miles an hour, I'd start turning and try to go over my old wake. And man, I'd lose the prop, lose the prop, lose the prop. I couldn't turn. I couldn't turn on the boat. And I'm thinking, okay, and, and here I got it trimmed all the way in. So I'm like, well, it's only going to be worse if it's trimmed out, right? That's, that's what I've always known. It would, it would be worse. Um, so some, some people call it cavitation. I really looked this up to try to figure out when I was going to go to my dealer and how to explain to him what happened. Um, the way it really sounds to me is ventilation, um, where it's really not your cavitation plate, but it's, it's, it's called ventilation when that, when that water isn't, when you're, when that water isn't coming off the boat right to get to your prop, right? So it's really not the cavitation plate, it's just not your prop isn't get in, engaging in the water right. And um, from what I've read, a lot of people would call it ventilation, but to each his own. I, I call it prop blowout, it was blown out. So that, that's what I called it. Um, so I finished the break and I called my dealer on the way home because I'm like, there's something, something's not right here. So I told him when, now, long story short, I did not pick this up from my the dealer I bought it from because they weren't located in my state, but they had a dealership in my state. So I actually drove further, but it was in my state taxes wise. Long story short, I bought it in my state. I said to the mechanic there, as soon as I looked at the boat, I said, the motor looks awful high to me. I said, it's in the highest hole. I said, is that, is that normal? Is that right? He goes, that's where Mercury and Tracker, that's where they tested them. That's where, that's where it has to be for the 200. Good enough for me. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't know any different, you know? So, uh, you know, and I told the dealer when I called, when I got off the water, I called my dealer and I said, listen, this is what's going on. I told him about everything. Then the first thing he says to me is, he says that these boats like trim. I think you need to trim it out and try it. And I thought, well, I mean, it, it, they're not going to look at it unless I test this. Unless I, t I said, I told him, I said, that's against everything that I've ever known, but I will trim it out and we'll, you know, we'll go from there and, and we'll try it. So we went out the following day. I said, all right, well, we're going out tomorrow. I'll, I'll try it tomorrow. Now it was, um, it was, it was all calm and we went out and no different, same issues. I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get the motor to engage in the water. I mean, we hit 52 miles an hour and I mean, don't get me wrong. The boat, the boat went, it was glass, you know, when we were going, but I could barely trim it out. I mean, I would trim it out. You know, I mean, it's hard to say on the gauge, but you know, I, I couldn't trim it out a quarter of the gauge. I couldn't trim it out with it losing water. So I thought this it can't be normal. So we were going around and we took some turns, you know, I told him, I said, Hey, we're going to do some things. And, um, so we took some turns and, and the prop would blow up and I tried trimming it out, you know, leaving it in, couldn't, couldn't get any change. So I said, okay, well, 
you know, we, we know we have that problem. And um, so we ended up fishing that next day, stayed out in the water. You know, everything was, was great. I knew we weren't in trouble. It just, I couldn't, it wasn't performing like we wanted it to. So we, we got off the water and took the boat up onto the, um, the, um, the ramp and we're getting ready to take the plug out, take the, and as Carter stated, I take the plug out and water is just gushing, gushing out. out and I'm going, what is, what, you know, I'm looking around like what, what, what happened? The, the plug should be preventing yeah. water. You know, and I'm thinking I did a break in and had no water. When I did my break in, I had no water. I take the plug out every time at the ramp, you know, you know, leave the water where you, you know, so I took the plug out and, and there was no water and I couldn't understand it. So I went up to hit the bilge pump. Now our bilge is throwing water. The plug's throwing water. I open up the center compartment and in the battery tray, there's this much water. And this is after it's been running because I'm confused going, where the hell is all this water coming from? Um, and so, you know, I'm already upset at this point, but, you know, what are you going to do? So I get the, the boat off the water and we call the dealer again. As soon as I left the the ramp. It, it was a, uh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. It was a Saturday when we went fishing. Yeah. I called him Monday. By the time we got off the water, they only opened till noon, I think. So I waited till Monday. In the meantime, I went on Facebook and asked the question to anybody, you know, saying, Hey, has anybody had a problem with their motors like this? Um, you know, I said the whole leaking situation, you know, and you know, a lot of people said live wells, people have problems with live wells leaking this and that. So the big thing with the motor situation was people are saying, your motor's too high. Um, and again, you know, I got a dealer and tracker saying, nope, this is where it's supposed to be. So I said, okay, well, you know, I told the dealer again what was going on. And, um, and Monday, Monday, I called the dealer, told him what was going on. And he's sitting there, you know, while I'm trying to talk to him, he says, he said, well, it's probably blowout, you know, as far as the leaking, the leaking water. When your prop's blown out or whatever, you're probably kicking water back towards the back of the boat and it's coming in the ports. And, you know, I'm trying to basically get him to stop talking. And I told him, I said, no, it's when I'm sitting still. It's, it's when I broke in the boat, I didn't have any water. It was all when I was sitting still. So water is getting in the boat without the motor even running. So I said, that's, it, it's got to have more to do than that. And I told him how much water was coming out and this and that. So he says that it sounds to me like you're going to have to bring it up. You have to bring it up and we're going to have to test it and find out where the water is coming in. So we um, decided that I believe we, do we go fishing again the next? Mm, yes. The yeah. next weekend. So we couldn't get the boat in yet until um, like the following week or whatever. So we went fishing again and I'm thinking, okay. So I tightened the, um, the transducer screws a little bit thinking, I don't know, maybe they're leaking a little bit. There's a lot of water. But then I also, I'm like, maybe I didn't have the plug seated in there just right. And I said, you know, because I couldn't remember how it felt when I was. So we went again, and I made sure that that plug was all the way in there. And what we did is we went out, you know, basically went out fishing. And, you know, we were there for sitting for about 10 minutes, and I hit the bilge pump, and the bilge is pumping out water. So we fished for about four hours again, and we just kept using them. Every time we would sit for about 10 minutes, I'd, I'd run the builds, and I would time how long it ran for just so I had things to give to the dealer. So we played around a little bit more with the motor, trying to get it to you know um, ventilate or blow out the prop again. Well, we hit a, a wave, and all the power in the boat was gone. Lost the, the radio. The radio. The everything was gone. Yeah. And not every, the graph, right? So the trolling motor worked, the main battery, the main motor worked. Um, so, so when we were moving spots, and you, that was, um, we were moving, and that was our last spot. Yeah, we were, we were right going to move the, the one, we were going to move to one more spot. So but, we were on our way back to the ramp. But when we, when the power just went off, yeah, we decided like, what is going on? This should not be happening. Yeah. So we just went back to the. Well, ramp. we did that because we had no bilge pump. Yeah. The bilge pump was one of the things that went out. So here we know we're taking on water, but we also know the bilge pump is keeping up with it. So, you know, we're, we're good as long as we have a bilge pump. Well, when the power went out and I hit the bilge pump thing and noticed that's one of them that went out, all the 12 volt outlets, 
outlets went out. Everything went out other than basically the trolling motor. So I knew it wasn't those batteries and the main motor was working. Thank goodness. Um, so we decided that's it. I mean, I can't, I can't stay out here with him um, knowing we're taking out water because I can't get rid of the water. So that ended our day. Um, we decided to go, we left again. And I believe that was a Friday. I believe we called the dealership. Yeah. We called the dealership and said, you know, hey, now I lost power. You know, I don't understand what's happening. You know, it's, it's problem after problem after problem. So he says, hey, there is, there's a, um, you know, check your fuses, but he goes, there's a, there's a circuit breaker in the back of the boat, you know, you know, check that. And I said, well, I'm, I'm going home now. I'm not, I can't, I can't wander on the water if this is, and start looking for power things when I'm taking out water. I knew, I knew that that wasn't going to happen. So I got home and I opened up the back compartment and we already showed this in the video. There's a circuit breaker with a, with a trip switch on it. That is laying between the motor and the back wall. You got this much in the area and that circuit breaker is about that wide. The only thing I can think of is on our way back, like I said, we were trying to test it. I went over my own wave awake. And when I came back, that battery in the back must have went back towards that wall and hit that kill switch. It's the only thing I can think of because the kill switch was tripped. I mean, literally when we got home, I went up the first compartment I went through there and, and tripped it back, tripped it back, whatever, reset it. Everything was good. Everything came back on, everything, you know. So I temporarily did uh, use a cable tie to get it off of there. The dealer has since moved it, which is, which is great. You know, I mean, I, I had it in a decent spot where it wouldn't hit again, but they permanently moved it to where nothing can hit it anymore. So that was also um, an issue that we had. So I, um, during that weekend, there was someone on Facebook that, you know, if he sees this, you know, I mean, you know, thanks to him, but he got a new V18 and he had read my post about the blowout problem I was having with my prop. And he had posted his first video of when he went out and everything, everything went great. Drove great. You know, everything was, was great. And he had the, said the same boat I have, I believe with the 200 on the back. And so he's doing this and I'm like, wait a minute, you know? So I, I commented on his post and I said, Hey, you know, where's your motor? I think I said, where's your motor mounted? You know, a lot of, well, he had mentioned, he remembered my post and he said something to his dealer about the issues I was having. So what his dealer did was change his prop. So he ended up going to a um, 14 by 19 pitch prop. His dealer put that on, said he had the wrong prop. Mine is a 13.8 by 20 pitch. That's what I have from the factory. So I now, after finding all that out and it ran great, I mean, you know, I tell, my dealer, I call my dealer that Monday again. So this is getting to the point now where the boat's ready to, ready to go in at this point, um, that week. And I call him and I said, hey, just talk to somebody on Facebook, their dealer changed their prop. And he's going, I, I don't understand wh why, why would certain people would have one prop and other people have other prop, props. He said, Mercury and Tracker test these boats with this configuration and since 2020, two or something 2021 whatever it is it had this configuration and this was what works so he said i'm gonna have to call tracker and find out what the issue is why someone's prop is being changed from a dealer but yet they're not telling anybody they're not you know so he calls tracker and says he basically tracker ends up in a big powwow saying what's going on with these with these boats and tells him about my issue and come to find out my dealer makes a statement that um I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure I don't say it or tracker tracker just decided that I had the correct prop and most boats with my configuration perform the best with it mounted in the highest position. So the first, of course, I said this, what do you mean most? And my dealer said the same thing. He's like, I, I that's the same thing I said to him. What do you mean most? Evidently, some don't. Some have an issue with this prop blowout, cavitation, ventilation, I don't know what the right term is, I don't really care. Um, so that they're gonna have to test it. They're gonna have to bring the boat in, lower the motor, tracker approved them to lower the motor. Believe it or not, just so everybody knows, when you're under warranty, buy a new boat, 
The dealership does not decide where to mount your motor. The, the factory tracker and Mercury have decided where it performs the best with the right prop, with everything. I had a lot of people saying your dealer mounts that motor. My dealer did not mount my motor. It came like that. That's what tracker, that's where tracker puts it. So the dealer gets it. First thing he does is he tries to order a Tempest prop for it. He said, that's the first thing he goes, Tempest props work great on these motors. I can't find one. Anybody nowadays knows the stainless steel props. You, you can't find them. So he couldn't find one. He said, I was even willing to pay extra for it. I just, but the problem with tracker and mercury is when you have a brand new boat, you cannot put a reground or remanufactured prop on this boat. The dealer can't do that, right? It's got to be a brand new mercury, right? It's got to be an approved prop. So that was one of the issues we had was he couldn't just take a prop that was sitting around. Could he have tested it? Sure, but he couldn't give me it because it was a used prop. It had to be a new prop. So that's what we were running into. He said, I'm trying to keep everything under warranty. I'm, you know. So the boat went back to the dealer after owning it for three weeks. Yeah. So we had it for three weeks and it's back at the dealer now. Um, so as far as the boat taking on water, okay? So they had this boat for over three weeks, okay? They called me, they said the first, the first thing they did was, sorry, let's go back. The first thing they did was went after the problem with the motor blowing, the prop blowing out. He said that they, they got approval from Tracker to lower it down two holes and they were to test it at that. Now remember, I was running 52 miles an hour, okay? By moving that motor down two holes, the dealer had no ventilation, no prop blowout, went through his own wake, did everything he could. And on a straight shot, he said that he slowed down at 56 miles an hour. So right there, it went up four miles an hour just dropping that motor down. So that to me right there meant, well, you took care of the, the ventilation problem or anything because now you can trim out, right? That's the big thing is I couldn't trim out anyway to even get speed out of it. So as of right now, I do not have it on my vessel view at that because I had, of course, my phone and he was running the, it wasn't, a, but he says he had it at 56 miles an hour. We're supposed to be out right now in it, but weather-wise, we're not. So I can't verify that for sure. I don't know why you'd lie to me. Um, but you know, as of right now, that's what he's saying is 56 miles an hour. So, you know, I'll let you guys know in a, in a future video when we go out fishing, yeah. you know, we'll make sure we get a speed test on it. Um, so there ended up being after that, they, they fixed that now came to the leaks, right? So they've found three leaks in the boat, three smaller leaks added to a big leak. Um, first was the transducer mount. Um, you know, they say almost like all we do when we're fishing, right? Or when we're installing these things, those little rubber back washers that are, that he said, you know, unless it's perfectly flush again, straight, you know, so he silicone the um, screws in, which is the same thing I would have done if I would have installed them. So he fixed that. Next leak he found was the drain for the rear live well. Okay the way it was explained to me is everything is pressurized, right? So your ports in the back of your boat, of course, they're open, right? They're just open, but they're, they're pressurized to not let water in, right? So water comes in those, those, those ports to an extent, but it stops, right? Because it's pressurized. It's not, it's not going to just keep coming in. Well, there was a leak at the bottom There was a leak at the bottom of the drain for live well in the back, which of course now changes that pressure and was letting water basically leak through that hose into the hole. Not in the live well, but into the hole. So they fixed that. They got a new rubber seal and he ended up siliconing that also. And he said, it'll never leak again. You won't have any problem with that. Finally, the plug assembly. This ended up being the one that it was there over an extra week. So they had to order a new plug assembly and they had to order a tool. I guess it must've been a tool to press it together, right? If you think about it, the way I think about it, it almost looks like a giant rivet, right? It's gonna press the inside to outside and there's a rubber seal on the inside and that, that's how I guess it seals from water. Well, it's right at the bottom of the V. And what he's explained happened is when, they, when the machines or whatever did that bead of weld, right? That, that welding bead around the bottom, 
either heat transfer or some of that weld or whatever basically made that straight thing, right? The heat transfer to that eighth inch thick aluminum somehow maybe made a little bend right there, right? So when they tried to press those two pieces in on the inside, they couldn't get it to seal. He said he, you know, he had a 250 pound guy, you know, whatever they did, they could not get it to seal. So they went, of course, through Tracker again, because this is all warranty stuff. So Tracker decides that weld it, weld a plug assembly in there. It's the only way we're going to stop this. They've seen it before where that, that inside of that wall is not perfectly straight. You have to weld one in there. So of course, now I had to wait for somebody to weld it. So now it's welded. Um, again, he told me, he goes, well, it'll never leak again. He goes, I, Tracker used to weld them back in the day, I guess. But now assembly wise, it's faster for them in their production line to do that piece than another stage of welding, right? So that, that's what he explained to me. So he said, now it's welded. He goes, that'll never leak. He said, and the issue with it is though, I already have to bring it back this winter to get the top of the gunnel painted. Well, now they're gonna have to basically, what they're gonna do is they're gonna re-sand that down where it was welded and they're gonna refinish that, repaint all that. Because corrosion wise, you know, I said, I want something in writing saying that this isn't gonna corrode over the next you know, two months that I'm using it. I'm, I don't go in salt water here, but we could, we could inch into brackish water. Um, but anyway, any kind of water, you know, I, I don't want exposed aluminum or metal or anything and, and have some kind of um, corrosion problem. So that's going to be fixed this winter also. So we, um, you know, out of the, it's been nine weeks, you know, and I mean, they had it for over three, um, you know, and weather wise, you know, we couldn't get out last weekend and this weekend, but, you know, in the first, like I said, we went on to three weeks and it had to go back to the dealer. I mean, there was stuff beyond what I could fix, what I was comfortable fixing. You know, like I said, I tightened up the screws for the transducer, but you know, it's under warrants. It's a brand new boat. I mean, it's brand new. I mean, and, and when you're spending this, you, you just, you kind of figure that that stuff's not going to happen. Um, well, to you anyway, right? We all have Facebook. We all have, you see this stuff happening, but you hope it's not going to happen to you. Um, but other than that, uh, I know that one of the things I said was the, the trailer on this boat, trailering this boat is so much different than my 175. It doesn't bounce. It doesn't, I mean, the brakes are nice. I think it's actually easier on my truck than, than uh, my 175 was. Um, and also it feels very solid on the water. Uh, I wish the prop didn't blow out when I first got it, but you know, as far as the actual, you know, you're hitting waves, you're hitting, I mean, it's amazing how, how much more stable the boat feels, um, you know, than the 170, but that's why you, that's why I bought it. You know, I bought the deep V design. Um, now a lot of people have commented in Facebook with some of the issues I've had and, and all this, you know, they'll say the comment of, I, I wouldn't have taken delivery of that boat. You know, I would have, I would have told them, you know, take the boat back. I don't want it. I don't want, well, I mean, you, you know, when I first picked it up, you're talking about a scratch on the gunnel. I mean, I, I don't know if they, they promised to, to fix it. The only way to, to get it factory is to order a new boat. Well, I mean, I, I, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to wait another. I mean, at that point, you're probably talking three, four months at this point. I opened, I ordered mine in April. So, you know, summer comes a lot more people are ordering them. So, um, I would have never thought that it would be at the dealership for three weeks. Um, some people have said, I, I demand compensation, you know, for the three weeks it was there. I, my dealer is trying to fix it right. You know, I, I can't, I can't fault them for being there three weeks. They couldn't get parts. We all know how parts are right now. How, I mean, I can't fault them for that. The dealer has been, my dealers have been absolutely incredible. Um, it's actually Bowers Marine Sales in, um, in um, Kutztown, Pennsylvania, which is close to Reading, Pennsylvania. They have been great through this, through the, the entire process. Um, any questions I have, when I call, they're there. You know, somebody, if they're not, they call me back within minutes. There, I have no issues with my dealer. You know, this is all tracker stuff that, you know, didn't, you don't expect to happen when you, you know, when you take the boat. Um, and then I guess to kind of, kind of, close this out i wanted to say that would i have would i buy this boat again yeah i think i think i would i'd buy this boat again um i love the way it looks um i love the features on the inside i love the safety for him you know compared to my 175 value for what you get 
Yeah, I was at the dealership for three weeks getting repairs. I get that. But, you know, you, you know, when, when you're when you're getting a, you know, a 200 Mercury, you know, on a 19 foot boat, you know, for 50,000, it's, 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 to me, it's, I would, I would do it again. Um, I would hope I didn't have the same issues, but I would still buy this tracker boat again. Um, I wanted a safe boat for my son. Uh, the, the, the ability to use uh, the swim platform, right? The ability to be able to ski um, or tube. We probably wouldn't ski. We'd probably tube. Um, that's why we went with the 200. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't regret that at all. I mean, I would, you know, it's, I'm sure the 150 is okay for this boat. I mean, they sell a 150 and a V19. So I'm sure the 150 is okay for this boat. But I just, I, I'll never buy, when I bought my 175, I bought a 60 horsepower. I'll never buy another boat without the max horsepower available for the boat. I just feel like if you need it, it's there. Um, once you, once you take delivery of that boat with that, you know, that, you know, smaller, smaller motor, you know, no, you could, sure, you could re, rig it you could read but i mean i'm buying a brand new boat I, I just feel after the first one i bought that i'll never do that again i'll always buy the max motor hopefully this is the last boat we ever have um so like i said i i appreciate you guys if, if you stayed till the end i know it's a long video uh we did want to do a kind of an extensive uh, i want everybody to know the problems i had the solutions in case you run into some of those problems uh what my dealer did uh, the way i handled it um, sure. I'm going to have comp, you know, people saying, you know, I would have taken the boat back, but you know, I didn't, I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I want this boat and we love it. And, um, you know, what are your, your, your favorite features besides your snack compartments? That's probably my favorite thing. That's probably his favorite thing. Um, plus, he has the his radio. Own, plus the radio and also he loves the windshield. I mean, I, I, having this in cold weather is, is, you know, a game changer for us. Um, and the radio. He loves having the radio. We do YouTube videos, as everybody knows, on this site. And, you know, all the time now we got to be, let, you know, as soon as our rod starts bending, hold on, we got to shut the radio down because of YouTube. You know, so, but he does love the radio. Um, again, I appreciate you guys for, for sticking with us. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, um, put them below. Um, we'll try to answer them. Hopefully we'll get back out in the water soon and do some more fishing videos. Yep. All right? Yep. Thanks again, guys. So one of the uh, um, issues that we had from the factory was the position of the motor from the factory. And you can see that the, the hole that it actually came in is right here. Okay. <laughs> so we had to go round and round with a dealer and tracker to get it basically the motor lowered, right? So the, they moved it down two holes so the motor is two holes further i guess you know you want to say into the water um and that has made all the difference so that came from the factory like that the other issue as you can see by this this is the other issue that we have to bring it back um this winter to get basically they're going to re-sand it down and then paint this entire section um they could not get the plug to sit flat and to seal right. So that was one of the leaks that we had. So that um, that's showing you kind of where they welded that, where they welded that in there. Um, and then the other thing that was actually leaking was the transducer bolt. So they had the rubber washers behind them and they took those out and he just silicone screws in. And then if you've all stuck around this far, this long, we're about to show you the one feature that Tracker added this year, and Carter's going to point it out. There it is. That is the addition this year. 45th Isn't it anniversary. Great? So we waited 2023 to buy us so that we could have a 45th anniversary. That's not true at all. We had no idea that that was the change, but that is the only change that they had. 